Welcome to Arsenal Above All. I've got Brian with me tonight to go over a pretty much straightforward Champions League win, another victory over uh, the old uh, European war horses, Seville, who seemed like they pretty much chucked it tonight uh, to get back into the Europa, uh, Europa League and win that again. But so uh, we'll be talking about that and uh, the performance uh, from a few individuals, especially a particular average uh, French centre-back um, that we've got, which we <laughs> sold tonight. Mm. But um, before all of that, of, of course, let's go. Hello and welcome to the show. Brian, how are you doing, my friend? Yes, I'm good, Mike. Yep. Uh, nice little tidy little victory on a Wednesday yep. night, eh? On a rainy Wednesday night. Yeah, very, very nice. Um, you know, Mike Nelly lighting up the carpet, um, doing some madness, you know, absolutely <laughs> on it tonight. Amazing to see. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for, for joining me tonight just to go over, uh, which was, like as we, we've said, pretty straightforward. Uh, a very mature win um, against a team that, you know, has been renowned for being um, mature and pretty, you know, hard to break down. Um, what was your thoughts on, on on the actual lineup? Because I think I think we may have spoken at the weekend about the changes. Um, Eddie, obviously, Eddie and Ketia uh, picked up that injury uh, at the end of the Newcastle game. And it looks like, obviously, turnaround few couple of days was going to be a bit short for him and then it was a case of who what was you going to do up front and it looked like it was well as we, we saw as we saw Trossard was playing you know in that role what, what did you think of of that and has he pretty much played himself into contention that he should be starting because we, our attack seemed to open up a little bit and it was a lot more fluid do you think or do you think Eddie's going to come back in you know um if he's fit on on the at the weekend um, I don't see why he should. I think um, Trossard effectively played himself into into the lineup against Burnley at the weekend with that performance tonight. Um, good movement. Um, he played that central area when he needed to be in those particular areas. He played that well, and particularly that showed in the goal as well. But he was prepared to run up, you know, do do the work across the line as well. But run into areas where you know he was going to be more he was going to be quite effective, um, and mainly that was in that central kind of that central area when we where we when we got the ball wide, and in the right you know our kind of at, at times I felt that the, the end product, particularly on Martinelli, despite the bits he was doing tonight, was it, it was that was Brazil nineteen seventy showboating at, at times. Um, <laughs> But part of sometimes the end product was a little bit lacking. That that, that wasn't necessarily down to him all, all, all of the time. That was an out, that was down to bodies getting into the box as it's well box, to keep yeah. that option. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what we did see from Trossard is when 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 it was needed, he was there and he was there, there to dispatch it um, from from Saka's cross on um, for the for the opening goal. Um, so I think he's you know I, I think he's played his way in. Um, for the weekend, m m most definitely, and I think obviously um, taking him off as well uh, a bit later on in the game. And I know that's usually quite a standard thing with Trossard when yeah. he tends to start anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think he, you know he will be one that will need protecting also for the, for the for the weekend. Just knowing that the numbers are a bit short at the moment. Yeah, because obviously Odegaard is still missing. I know in his program notes he pretty much. I think he said he wanted to be back for tonight. So he missed out. And obviously they showed him he was watching up in the box, I think, with his dad. Um, so, yeah, the, the injuries do seem to be piling up. There was a bit of a worry about a, a, a knock uh, to Tommy Asu at half time, which saw him get subbed for Sinchenko, who I thought played well mm. uh, when he came on. He looked like he got the bit between his teeth uh, as well. And 
um, you, you know, um, he is obviously an option at various different positions, you know, going forward. But I definitely think Trossard's performance was pretty much reminding me of when he came in last season mm -hmm. um, and he and he was linking up so well with um, Martinelli and and, and and Saka. And, you know, it, it just seems to me how we just seem to play a little bit quicker. Um, and when we do play a little bit quicker around that, those areas, um, we just look a lot better because I think it, it, it has, as you said, again, as you spoke in the last show, it looks like it's just a little bit ponderous, a little bit predictable. And um, we're just trying to find the perfect pass through the eye of the needle. But when we did move it a little bit quickly, that's where we opened up. And obviously Martinelli was just phenomenal on on on, on the wing. That guy, he actually had him, he literally had him on toast from minute one. Um, and it wasn't until I'm probably what, like 60th minute when he got a bit of a dig back and, you know, that was way too late. The damage had well been done. Um, but yeah, you would, you so you would go with, with Trossard, you know, pretty much if, if Eddie came back in, uh, oh, sorry, if Eddie was fit, you pretty much would stay with Trossard up front just because of that, the way he was just bringing different angles and stuff. Because the finish was great as well. You know, mm. it, was a, it was a quality finish. Um, you know, I, I, I think that's the, that's the thing we've been worrying about in terms of going forward. You know, Arteta said it before the game uh, with TNT when he was saying about, um, you know, just the lack of kind of creativity and, and sharpness up there. And he's seen it tonight. So I don't really see why he would change that and, and bring him back in. But what, what, what can you say about um, um, the performance from Bukayo Saka? Because it, it was a little bit of a strange one, even <laughs> though he got his usual numbers. You know, he got gets his assist and and uh, and uh, you know his goal obviously in the second half. You know, brilliantly taken goal. But what was your thoughts on on his performance? Do you still think there's a little bit of um? Seems like heavy lifting. It's not everything at the moment for him. He's like it's a bit of a struggle. But um, I think once he got the once he got the assist, he seemed to you know spark up a little bit. Well, I think well, as you said, I think you know it's it's sometimes it's the pace that we 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 play at. And I think what Trossard did was to bring a bit more pace to to our kind of the front the front three, you know, getting the ball and moving it quickly because that's what Bakayo basically likes when the ball gets to him quickly to get those situations on that one v one, either on the inside or on the out, out outside of the defender. I think when the ball's got to come to his to his feet, which is great, he's got he's got good feet and he can turn and spin at times. It can also slow and be quite look quite ponderous as well at times so I think you're right I think to a certain degree he is there's still there's still something not quite up to speed with him at the, at the moment and that might be to be to, to be fair to, to just general knocks and just general wear and tear you know and that's where the levels of protection really comes into it a bit more now with with, with him um so it's something to you know we've got to got to watch but you know i think look when, when we look at when we look at the goal and the things that he, he does do when he, he gets the space and time to do things then we you know we, we there is always there tends to be you know 99 percent of the time an end product which is you know and i suppose that's what arteta is probably looking at more than anything else um at the moment why he's probably kept into the team because he can do that when necessary where we might not necessarily kind of have that in our general replacements as such at the moment yeah um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I kind of think you know, Jesus would have been probably that natural replacement if you know he was fit in in terms of that right hand side because he's done that a couple of times mm. uh, this season. Um, the other the other alternative would have been someone like like Reece Nelson, but he seems to have Vieira as that person to come in on the on the right hand side. Even though I'm not you know 100 percent sure yeah. about that, but um. But yeah, it's just the fact that you know Saka got his assist, you know, it, it seemed to pick him up a bit. Worry is again the lack of protection he was getting. You know, I don't know how many fouls that guy did on him, and he got subbed without without a card. Um, it, it's just it's just crazy. I know there was a couple of occasions where he threw himself down and he tried to manufacture maybe a penalty or something, but it doesn't mean you know the guy was getting still getting dealt with and um, just very strange performance from from the official. Um, um, tonight, which you know was was a bit of a that was the only sort of negative because I think Saka got booked as well when he when when he uh, came off. 
Yeah. Because the referee kind of said to him he needs to go off one way. And it's just really something really pedantic like that, gets a yellow card mm. for that. But someone who boots you around the pitch for, <laughs> for for 60 minutes doesn't get anything. It's just it's just ridiculous. But um so yeah, brilliant finish, brilliant team move, you know, great, great assist from um George, you know, pre-assist, you should say, from Jorginho as well. So, you know, he would have enjoyed that because obviously he's had uh, you know, he had a bit of a hard time uh, at the weekend, um, getting battered uh, by uh, Bruno Guimaraes. And um, obviously, yeah, uh, great ball. See, that's the thing with Saka. I think um, um, he, he re- he's reluctant to take his man on, as we, as we've know, as we know. And but when he when you play that ball in front of him, to him to run onto, you know, he's devastating, and we don't seem to man- manufacture or get into situations like that. So. Um, I know Ben White used to do that a hell of a lot last season with Odegaard. But again, you know, the lack of creativity, you know, when you've got people like, you know, Je Jesus, um, uh, Party, who would have played a probably a similar pass like that, yeah. you know, out wide and Odegaard, then obviously you can see that, you know, we're, we're not, we haven't got that creativity because of those b- bodies are missing. And that's the only concern, really. It's kind of good that we've got an international break coming up. Um, mm. So we can see. Hopefully, Odegaard stays behind, um, um, doesn't go to to Norway. Um, they're not going to qualify uh, for the Euros, so it's kind of well, what's the point of him going there? Um, um, you know. So then, you know, obviously, Saka will, will will end up going as well. Obviously, because he's fit. Um, but obviously, with with his knock tonight, let's see what happens. I'm sure he'll play at the weekend. Um, so comfortable um, uh, first half, really. You know, Seville didn't didn't do anything at all. Yeah. They were just so poor, um, and we restricted them to that. And uh, part of that was to because of a um, an average uh, centre back, or you know, he's, he's not that good. <laughs> um, that we were told by World Cup winner uh, Marcel Desai and um, and uh, um, William Gallas, who I think is still crying on uh, St Andrew's pitch on uh, somewhere, um, <laughs> he, you know, he's, probably, he's probably turn the floodlights on the grounds when they're closing the closing the ground, and they can just see someone in the in the distance, and it's just someone in a uh, silhouette. And I think he's probably Gallas. He's still sitting down on the pitch, still crying after um, <laughs> what happened at two two. Absolute muppet. I mean, Dave Gallas has gone out and said that he's you know Saliba is pretty average. Um, the Sai has said that as well. I mean, they say you know you don't know you don't really know football. You know we're 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 fans. We don't really know football unless you're a player. But Brian, I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I don't. All I, really all, don't. I, yeah. all, I, all I can say is Mike is that um, he, he, he does the average things very well. Then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> that's a good way to answer it. I mean, um, yeah, and I think Desai is probably still spinning after Henri um, bounced him around the place at Highbury um, at that <laughs> time. I was there that game, and um, yeah, I couldn't believe it because that's when Henri was starting to come, started to score goals, you know, and he and he and he wasn't he wasn't the, the Henri that we we knew, but we knew Desai was was this you know massive uh, World Cup winner, you know, playing for Chelsea. And then when Henri absolutely ripped him and stuff, he's obviously still a bit better about that as well. But um, <laughs> but yeah, Saliba, apart from a little lapse um, in the second half, he was just absolutely, he, he was ridiculous again. Absolutely ridiculous again. I think someone said in a, on, <clears throat> online somewhere, said if someone offered you 250 million for him and uh, Gabriel, like if Saudi money came in, you know, would you would you sell it? And you, you wouldn't because it's like, you know, how are you... You're going to get someone as good as him and what he's doing, um, and just how composed he is. It's it's absolutely phenomenal what he's doing. And again, we've got to mention Declan Rice as well, who who was absolutely superb again tonight. It's just scary how those how good those two are, bro. Oh, you know, the, the Declan Rice was kind of made for Champions League football. It's that it's the stage. That's the stage he's always wanted to play at. You can tell. Um, you know, he's he's that stomach for the fight. Doesn't care who he's who's who he's up against. He's he's, he's prepared, you know, to drag the team along with him. And you know, we talked about the armband and stuff like that. At the end of the day, he wears the armband without actually wearing it. <laughs> to be honest with you, um, yeah, pretty much. He, he, 
yeah, you know, he 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 is kind of becoming that kind of heart and soul that we need, and that it goes back to that kind of that spine, Mike, doesn't it? it goes back to that, that spine that we used to, we, we used to have, you know, from the centre halves for our central midfield area. All we're kind of now needing is probably the prolific, prolific centre forward now to finish it all off, really, because we've got. You know that the makings are already there. You know the fundamentals are kind of already there, yeah. and you know the ages that these that, that they're at as well, and they're performing like that already. It's it, it, you know we we use the word frightening at yeah. times, but it is frightening knowing that the fact is is that you know that they're, they're young ages, and they could be in and around that club for the next six, seven, eight years plus if they if they want to stay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have to be, yeah, we have to be successful. We've got to start getting some pots to to keep these these guys, you know, around. You know, that that's that's the level that we're at at the moment. You know, that's the level of the players that we we're going to recruit and what we have. We need to, you know, they need to be delivering stuff. You know, obviously on a personal um, personal basis for them. Obviously, they, you know, if you, if a team doesn't win something. You know, it's like in the, in the past, someone says, oh, I want to play Champions League football, but the team, you're, you're part of a team that maybe aren't, you know, punching their weight. So you can't really sort of, you know, absolve the blame and say it's their fault. But with these guys, they're so good. Um, you know, the club need to, you know, make sure that they're moving in the right direction. I'm sure, you know, um, Varteta is doing, with, with, he's locking down players uh, with, with contracts and what have you. So you're absolutely right. The next part of the puzzle is someone up front. Um, some people will say yeah, the part of that spine is still the goalkeeper. So <laughs> some people will say that after <laughs> the situation, there was still a couple of hairy moments of, for Rare tonight, yeah. you know, which which uh, which, which yeah. should have been comfortable for him. But anyway, mm. I mean, you know, he's got a clean sheet. But you know, you're 100 percent right. It's we have to. The next piece of the puzzle is definitely a, 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 um, a forward. Sent forward, and you know, I think the way things are panning, that's going to be another defensive midfielder there as well to dovetail with with Rice because you know he's doing he's kind of doing a lot by himself at yeah. the moment, and what you don't want to do is overburden him uh, and stuff as well because then you know he's mm. like Superman at the moment, but then he you, mm. you don't want him to get a big injury. Um, so comfortable first half, second half you know, a little bit, you know, um, you know, taking you know. In second gear a little bit, but then obviously the man again, um, you know, the man who who was literally on fire, the Brazilian Martinelli slips a lovely ball through to uh, Bakaya Saka right. and uh, does a lovely chop. You know, it looks like he's going to lose his footing because he slips a little bit, mm-hmm. um, but a brilliant finish. Um, we've seen those kind of finishes before. Um, what, what was your what was your take on that, bro? Oh. You know, Mark, Mark, Martinelli. Just, I think tonight you you can see how much that you know he wants to nail down that position on that left hand side. And it's not like he hasn't anyway to a certain degree, but that you know you can see he's taken that that even more responsibility. Another one, another twenty one year old looking to take that responsibility, driving us forward in the, in that game. You want that, you know, the out the out ball was always his. He, he knew he had to meet the beating of the, the, the full back all all game all game long. You know, and it's amazing how the fact of the two widest players dovetailing themselves to you know to to, to create and to then score. You know, it's, it's just it, it just shows it just shows the fact that we're mo- moving forward with you know us, that those two again. The, the, if we get the kind of the patterns of play right, we're, we're going to be devastating. We're going to be devastating, and that and that and that is shown. And I think we've, what we've got to look at is like is when. You know, we we were just chatting offline about the fact of I'm moving on into the kind of the you know into the knockout stages. How important in the knockout stages those two will effectively be in those big in in, in bigger games. Yeah, yeah, they're massive. they're gonna, they're going to they're going to they're gonna be massive, and it's good to see. You know, even with a, you know, a probably an eighty percent 
capacity of a Bukaya Saka is still is doing those those things. Yeah. Do, 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 do you know what I mean? So I'm you know I'm not going to be one of these ones that are going to turn around and say is that you know we, we, we you know we, we get to the final and we'll we'll win it. It'd be great if we if we, we did. Wonderful. But the key will be you know in and around that front three is how we basically turn turn you know turn turn different back fours turn different defend defenders and then how we kind of move in in things around the, in in midfield areas to get them get them in and get them beyond because yeah de- de- devastating de- devastating yeah it's going to be it's going to be absolutely huge that you know we can get through you know we need a point obviously to to qualify to the last 16 uh, because of the result tonight i think PS, psv won one nil against Lons. So um yeah, we need a we need a point from two games. So you know, you take that, you know, at the start of the uh, of, of the whole campaign. You, you know, we've got we've got Lons next. And we owe them obviously for that defeat over yeah. there. So um um hopefully we'll go out strong and secure that. And then the then the last game um uh, will be away to PSV and then hopefully that should be enough. You know, we and another win against Lawrence should be will be enough for us to secure yeah. first uh, the first the first bracket. So, um, yeah, so it's it's looking good. Obviously, it was a big game. Um, it's kind of obviously a little bit concerned because of the street street wise how street wise Sevilla, but it obviously looked like they pretty much um, cashed their chips and they wanted to um, ha- want to have another crack at the uh, Europa League it, it, it looks at um, on certain instances because they just didn't really turn up first half and we didn't allow them to that one instance where they broke through yeah. um, uh, Saliba obviously re- recovered and made uh, that, the the the, the, uh, the tackle um, but we pretty much held them at, at arm's length and um, the only worry was just the actual injury you know possible injury to Saka you know here getting actually booted up in the air again as he did for most of the first half, um, but yeah, you know, um, a great, a, a great um, evening, really. You know, Martinelli. Uh, you know, we we forget to realise, but that's it. That was his first game in the Champions League at home because obviously the, his day de- he made his debut in the Champions League against Seville um, in 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 the uh, in the third match day. So this was his really, you know, first night. You know, in the Champions League under the lights, and obviously he was inspired. He was unplayable, definitely man of the match performance uh, from him. But going on to um, um, Saturday, obviously we have um, Burnley, and then we have the um, international break, as we've mentioned before. Before we resume, um, what's your thoughts on on that? I mean, it's kind of like a bit, but you know they're struggling. Sheffield United, uh, like like Sheffield United are, and you know, a team at right right at the bottom. It's it's important that we don't go to take them for too lightly, do we? Because you know, I know Vincent Company likes them to play a little bit of expansive football. So I think they're going to try and play a bit. But what would you do? Would you do, do pretty much same as, um, or do you think he's going to lightly get? Um, even if Tommy Asu was fit, do you think he's going to get Sinchenko in that, that left left hand side? Um, personally, if Tommy Asu is fit, I'd rather start him. Um, I think because Vincent Company will know a little bit more about Zinchenko and they might have a plan for him. Where with Tommy, it's slightly different because yes, he can play in there, but he plays with both feet and you kind of saw that tonight. He was not afraid to basically use both feet when he needed to, where, you know, Zinchenko at, at I wouldn't say there's a reluctancy. He wants to use his right foot when he comes inside at times, but probably does. He plays the more predictable pass with his right foot coming inside. Where when I saw tonight with with, with Tommy, when he when he it was it was like he was like playing it was like playing central midfield to be honest with you, and he was prepared to use both feet, get the ball out wide. You know, it, it just looked very very comfortable in there. Very, very comfortable. So, to, to me, I would, I would still start if, 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 you know, if he's fit enough to start, I would certainly, I would certainly start him, certainly start him. As in the, the game itself for, for, for the weekend, look, the, the issue that with, with the expansive football that Burnley will play, it will sometimes will probably pick holes in what we do as well. 
you know, because there are sometimes there's a bit of naivety that the way that we we can let people bypass us. In, in you know that can play football and play around us. You know we, we know what Brighton has done to us. At, you know at the Emirates, Emirates before. You know so they're not going to be Burnley are not going to be afraid to come there and play. Mm. So that's the thing that we've got to be kind of be 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 wary wary of. I think you know Sheffield United didn't didn't come to play. They came to in some respects they came to just keep the score down and they couldn't even do that. You know Burnley despite their performances and stuff this season they. It's, it's the perfect place to go and play football, right? <laughs> it's a perfect yeah. place to go and play football. <laughs> so they're going to come there and think to themselves, "We're going to we're going to come and play. If we get beat four or five, we get beat four or five, but we're going to come and play because I know we're going to get chances, and we will probably give them chances." <laughs> yeah, and it's bad yeah. to say, but we will probably give them chances. So we, you know, we, we, we've got to, you know, chances that we make, we've got to convert. Yeah. And and then and ultimately, you know, it's, we know what the game is like at the end of the day. If you don't convert yeah. third chances, you don't necessarily win a lot of football matches. And it'd be one chance, and we'll, you know, we can get we can get beat. So it's about certainly for us, you know, converting the chances that we get, you know, and and actually not giving them an awful an awful lot. We've got to be a lot more tighter when we're playing against t- teams that can play football and go beyond the lines. At yeah. times we get opened up a little bit too more. And we were saying about Declan Rice doing a lot of running in those sorts of areas in midfield. You know, we've got to start avoiding those situations where he, you know, we are asking him to do two people's jobs in there, even though yeah. it's it's great that he can. It's not gonna that's not gonna last a, a 38 league season and a 50 50 game or 55 game cup cup season. Yeah. Yeah, I, f- I think um I think he he, he if I was him, I would go the same as tonight, pretty much. Maybe, um, maybe just having Chinchenko back in because he wants that domination of the ball. Um, but I don't see why he would he would change it. There's always a fear that he could put someone like um, uh, Fabio Vieira in. Um, but for me, I would just just stick with the same team. We've got an international mm-hmm. break. Go go strong. Yeah. Go hard. Get get the three points. Try and maintain or better the position in the table uh, before that break. But just don't do anything that's just going to take you after ball. Because just despite what we've done tonight in the in the performance, I don't think a lot of the players really exerted, exerted themselves <laughs> that, that much. Yeah. To say, oh, you know, I'm not going to need. You know, it was, it was pretty much a straightforward like a regulation a win as you could could imagine or wish for. Um, it's the perfect game, wasn't it? It was effectively yeah. the, per- the perfect game to have before a Premier League game. Yeah, exactly. A- and you're at home as well, so you haven't got to worry about yeah. any logistical stuff. Um, just uh, touching on a couple of things then before we go. Uh, nice uh, focus on the banner yeah. of, uh, of Jose Antonio Reyes, obviously, um, who, who sadly passed away. And obviously we know uh, his legacy at the, at the club, at both clubs. And it was remembered, I think it was... a. Uh, um, uh, we we uh, made um, a, a really good gesture when we visited Seville. I think Arteta gave um, sure. the, the club president um, some flowers, and they, mm-hmm. they uh, which we, they've got a shrine there for him. So that was great to see. And uh, just um, touching up on some of the uh, fallout from um, Arteta's um, um, <laughs> Arteta's crusade against PGMOL and um, the Chuckle Brothers. Um, Carragher and, um, and and Neville and uh, Michael Owen, um, who um, be careful about him signing into your DMs and asking for certain fo- type of photos, and um, <laughs> Oliver Holt, who um, I think is like I said, I think he's cracked open the uh, the Christmas bevies. Um, he's gone early, uh, Brian. <laughs> some of the stuff he's tweeting out as well. He's got form for that, but um, yeah, it seems like the, the LMA, the League Managers Association, have, have come out. Uh, apparently, um, not confirmed, not uh, yet quite, but uh, that they are sort of backing his concerns in terms of wanting more clarification over what clear and obvious is um, um, in terms of the uh, in terms of our, and they want a specialist there who is going to be you know able to work more as a unit, to rather than it being random where, where different people are different are. are, are assigned all the time and obviously this is on the back of what happened last week where Anthony Taylor was demoted uh, for his uh, 
brilliant performance the week before, um, given a um, demoted to the championship. And again, you know, what does that say to the, um, you know, you 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 turn up, you, you think, oh, what referee we got today? We got this one. Oh, he's been demoted to from the Premier League because he's he's useless. Oh, we've got him. That's great. And then he did, then he turned in a performance like that. And you're thinking, all oh, right, well, well, what's going to happen now? They're going to they're going to obviously get him in, do some training or whatever, some observations. All oh, right, you know, we'll give you the Chelsea and Man City huh? game. Yeah, you got you got yeah. a show piece game of the weekend. It's like, how does that? I was <laughs> I was astonished. Work? Work? I was uh, astonished when I when I when I saw that when I, it was just yeah you couldn't you couldn't make it up, and but this is this the thing is I'm like this is this is long overdue. It's long overdue, and I don't care what a lot of the other managers are basically saying out there that that you know Arteta shouldn't have said it in this way, or they shouldn't have said it that way, and this, that, and the other. He's only saying things which basically all of the managers want to say, but are afraid to actually come out and say it. And that's as simple as it gets. Simple as it gets. So. For me, he's opened up those doors for those managers to have those conversations now. Yeah. Where what would have ended up happening is is that we'll be back on match of the day on a Saturday evening, moaning and whinging because of the decisions and stuff like that, but in a way that they don't feel they want to, they're going to get themselves into trouble. Mikel Arteta stuck, stuck his neck, neck out. If he turns around and thinks he's going to get a two match ban basically from 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 the FA or the Premier League, then he's fought fine, fair enough. Strangely enough, there's no charges being put against him just yet. Yeah, yeah, that's funny, that isn't it? You know, um, you know, uh, they, there's apparently they they're debating on whether they've asked for his observations and and uh, the club's observations. So I'm sure that's going to be quite quite a, a healthy little dossier of of, of of all the incidents. You, you know, there's loads of them online and everything that you can see. But I just think, um, yeah, I think he's 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 had enough. He's take he, he take he take the hit. It'll be a fine, probably a couple of couple of games, if anything. But if it is a couple of games, and how that reflects badly to to the PGMOL, because everyone can see, apart from obviously a very very select few, can see that we were we were hard done by on on at least one or two of those those calls in that in that game. Um, and that's just the goal. That's not talking about the the um, um incidents as well. So um, yeah, so it'd be interesting to see what happens um, with him. But yeah, he he seemed like he was in good spirits tonight when he before the game, and I'm sure he will be after when we catch up the, um, the, the 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 press conference and what he has to say afterwards. Um, but yeah, the, it was it was nice to maybe he was buzzing about that that maybe that news that you know the the league manager association have got his back as well in regards to that and he's just felt well vindicated because um, I think until um, everyone gets behind it and realizes it's for, it's for the good of the game, it's not like you know like I, I think I said before you know being too tribal and thinking oh it's their problem and you know forget about it and we can banter them off when it's their turn. When it's when it's our turn, okay. Well, who's going to back us up? You've, everyone's got to be stand behind the injustice, and you know it should have been done for what's happened with Wolves the last couple of games as well, with, with what Gary O'Neill's had to deal with all season, pretty much from 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 the first game of the season. What 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 they've had, it's been unreal. Some of the decisions they've had, but hopefully, yeah, this will um, put them in their place, and we'll see some 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 fundamental change. But I think it's going to be a lot of hard work because. Those guys are still going to be there. It's not, like, it's not like they're going to be able to take them all out, and then they'll be able to just replace them with 20, 20 odd um, new referees. That you know, these guys are still going to be around, and um, you know. But at least it know we know that. Um, hopefully, um, you know they're going to be held accountable now. You know, even more, even more so. Um, but uh, but no, great win tonight. Um, really some good performances, you know, especially, you know, happy with Trossard because he didn't have a good game on Saturday when he came on and he scored the goal and, he's, and, he, and he looked really sharp, you know, in you know, up front. And I think that's, I think we said playing more centrally because he can go either side. He, can, he said afterwards he can use both feet. So, yeah, just, just use him in that sort of position. Uh, Martinelli on fire, man of the match performance. And then you've got the two, two Rolls Royces, really. You've got like a Range Rover in um, Brooklyn Rice. <laughs> Range Rover Rock with uh, <laughs> Declan Rice, and you've got the Rolls Royce with uh, Saliba. 
I lucky are we eh, to have um, to have those two. Um, oh. Like you said, Brian, we just need to sort out the um, the rest of the spine, and uh, I think we'll be in pretty good shape um, this season. But um, on that note, thanks, Brian. Thanks for your for your time tonight. I know it was a bit of a quick, short uh, review of another three points in the Champions League. Let's hope we can carry on and bounce back in the league with three points against Burnley, and then um, you know hopefully get everyone fit and ready for uh, the return uh, of the Premier League in, in a couple of weeks. Hopefully, you know, maybe we might see an appearance from Thomas Party. That would be a bit of a, you know... That's, 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 it, it, that's, it, that's getting close that's, to, that's been hopeful, Mike, yeah. yeah that's, it is getting is, close to Christmas, isn't yeah. it? And, um, <laughs> you know, you know, there's a certain geezer that you, you sort of see on a particular evening. So maybe you might... <laughs> if you see Party before Father Christmas, then I think we're, 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 we're in there. We're in, uh, you know what's going to happen, Mike. He's going to he's going to turn up for the for, for the game before he goes off to the African nation. So just stand. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's, probably, it's scheduled. Yeah. It's scheduled. Yeah, they probably they'll probably take him anyway over there, and um and and yeah, a little play forty five minutes, and then that a bit it'd be him done again, and um and yeah, and the Jesus is looking it's not looking good with him. It's, it's, they're saying a few weeks, a few more weeks, but um but yeah, let's hopefully when when we're back against Brentford, which Aaron Ramsdale will play. If he's fit, because obviously Raya can't play, so we know Ramsdale's going to be playing um, in that one, and then Good hopefully just carry on. Uh, yeah, just hopefully carry on and um, you know get get the get a, a run going as well. But thanks, Brian. No thanks very much for your time thanks, tonight. Thanks, thanks for everyone for watching and, and listening, and subscribing and liking. Um, obviously, this will be on all the uh, usual uh, platforms. Uh, thanks for all, uh, so the support and and the comments and everything. Really, really appreciate it. Um, all that's left to say is have a good evening. It's pretty late here, but uh, have a good evening. Have a good rest of the week. And we'll see you on Sunday with the review of the Burnley game. So until then, all the best. Come on, you Reds. Man, remember. Giroud into the box. And they have immediately!